a very warm welcome my dear friends to canopy of science today we are going to learn basics of cell so let's embark on this journey happy learning you must be surprised to see i have drawn cell and bricks side by side and have marked them as equivalent why because as bricks are joined one after the another to form a beautiful house in the same way cells are also joined together one after the other to form any living organism be it human being be it a bacteria be it the beautiful plants or any animals which we see around us hence cells are the bricks of life now coming to the definition of cell the cell is defined as the structural and functional unit of life why it is called the structural unit of life this is because the shape size dimension of any organism is formed by the arrangement of cells a human doesn't look like a plant because of the different arrangement of cell is different for humans and for plants and why it is called the functional unit of life it is because all the different vital functions of our body like digestion respiration circulation excretion within the cells all these vital functions are performed now coming to a second definition of cell it says that cell may be defined as the smallest organized unit of living body which is independent and self reproducing under favorable condition why it is called the smallest unit here arises a question tell me can we see cells with our naked eyes with our open eyes only can we see a cell no we need a specific instrument which is called the microscope under the microscope only we can visualize a cell so it is the smallest unit it is so small that we cannot see it with our naked eyes it is independent and self reproducing because a cell can divide into two cells and from that two cells we will get four cells when they will divide again and when these four cells will again divide they will form another eight cells and so on so when the cells are given favorable conditions what are these favorable condition like proper food temperature adequate oxygen water proper environment then the cell can live on its own and can form other cells too from one cell we can get multiple cells now coming to this flow chart it is saying that the cells are joined together to form tissues tissues in turn are grouped together to form organs and different organs will work hand in hand to form the organ system and all the organ systems collectively form a body this is how the flow chart tells us that from smallest cells a large living body can be formed now let's discuss an example neuron are the cells of the central nervous system which forms the nerves so neuron is the cell and nerves are the tissues these nerves join together to form brain and spinal cord together the brain and the spinal cord forms the system which is known as the central nervous system coming to a second example hepatocytes these are the cells of liver hepatocytes join together to form hepatic tissue these hepatic tissues combine to form a complete liver now liver together with the other organs like stomach and intestine forms the gastrointestinal system this system helps in digestion of our food 
so all these organ systems like central nervous system gastrointestinal system circulatory system respiratory system works together to form a complete body i hope now this flow chart is clear to you all depending upon the number of cells present in an organism they are classified as unicellular and multicellular organism uni means one multi means many so an organism which is made up of one cell is called unicellular organism and an organism which is made up of more than one cell it may be 2 3 100 lakhs of cells millions or trillions they are called multicellular organism examples of unicellular organism are amoeba bacteria yeast euglena and paramecium and the multicellular organisms are plants animals human and fungi here i want to say one thing that yeast is the only unicellular fungi all other fungi are multicellular thank you for listening with patience next video we'll continue with this topic only and discuss on classification and functions of cell hope you have enjoyed today's learning if you have any doubt mention it in the comment section until next time stay healthy stay motivated and keep learning as knowledge is everywhere you just need to grab it